Hi, I'm Captain Lori Rinaldi, and we're here in the chart room today in Greenwich, Connecticut to learn a little bit more about plotting on a nautical chart. So I have in front of me a chart of Western Long Island Sound. It shows the coast of Connecticut and New York. And the tools of our trade, first being a chart plotter, sometimes called a parallel rule, and a set of dividers. Now the chart itself is a valuable tool, and on it we have the latitude scale on either side and the longitude scale at the top and bottom. We also have a compass rose. The compass rose is comprised of two rings, commonly referred to as the inner and outer ring. The outer ring is oriented towards geographic north, which is the North Pole, and in charting we refer to that as true north. The inner ring is oriented towards magnetic north. Magnetic north presently resides in Arctic Canada. So the two are very different. The difference between geographic north and magnetic north is called variation. And that will change depending on where you are on Earth. The variation on this chart is showing 14 degrees west. So it will be important to determine the variation in your area. So let's get started plotting a course and determining its direction. I've selected two aids to navigation and I've drawn a line between them. This will be my course line. Once I've done that, I can remove the plotter and I can make a determination that this is indeed a safe route without any obstruction and there's plenty of water. So, let's go ahead and determine the direction of this route. We do that by laying the chart plotter on the course line. And very carefully, we will walk the plotter back to the compass rows until one edge of the chart plotter falls directly through the center of the compass rows where we can then make a mark through the rings of the compass rows and be able to read direction. So all we've done is transfer the direction of this line, our course line, onto the compass rows where we can read it as a course to steer. We do that by reading from the inside of the compass rows, and I can determine that that course is 90 degrees magnetic. So I can feel relatively confident that I can leave this harbor, find this aid to navigation, turn my vessel to 90 degrees, and steer at 90 degrees and reach my final destination. Now it does help to have some visual references along the way. And in this case, I do have one aid to navigation about three quarters of the way into my voyage that I should be leaving on the port side and that will help me to determine if I'm staying on track. So, we've gone ahead, we've plotted a course and determined its direction. We've read it from the inside ring of the compass rows. Now let's determine the distance of that course. It's important to know the distance of your course line so that you can correctly provision for your trip. Having enough provisions and fuel would be critical. So to do that, we're going to use the dividers and we're going to utilize the latitude scale on the side of the chart. Now the latitude scale provides us with coordinates, but it also provides us with distance. Using the latitude and longitude system, we have a system of measurement. Now, latitude runs north and south and its lines are equally distant to each other on the planet. This enables us to use that scale for measurement. So I can know 
that anywhere on Earth, one minute of latitude will equal one nautical mile. That's not the case for longitude. Because longitude is not equally distant from each other, it cannot be used for measuring distance on a chart. Longitude changes depending on where you are on Earth. So we will always measure distance on the latitude scale. Now latitude is read in degrees, minutes, and seconds. And for the case of chart work, we generally refer to degrees, minutes, and tenths of minutes. This directly corresponds with the markings on our chart. So, let's go ahead and set our dividers to one minute of latitude. Now, one minute of latitude is going to be either a white or black bar on the side of the chart. And one minute of latitude will equal one nautical mile. There are 60 minutes in each degree, therefore there are 60 miles in each degree. So I went ahead and set the dividers to one minute of latitude equaling one nautical mile. And I can then take the dividers, lay it on the course line, and walk the dividers counting off the mileage as I go. Now because this course line is rather long, it would be prudent to open the dividers to a slightly wider span. In this case I've selected three nautical miles. And now I can do the same procedure using the dividers set at three nautical miles and count off the distance. So I have three miles, six miles, and nine miles. And then I will close the dividers to the remaining span on my course, and I can measure that distance back at the latitude scale and determine that that is six tenths of a mile. So my course distance becomes nine and six tenths of a mile, or 9.6 miles. That's all it takes to measuring distance on a nautical chart. The key is remembering to always measure distance from the latitude scale. You'll never measure distance on the longitude scale at the top and bottom of the chart. Okay, let's move on to plotting a coordinate. We can plot a coordinate using the latitude and longitude scale. And I have selected a point in the middle of nowhere that I would like to get the geographic coordinates for. Once I have the latitude and longitude of this point, I can place them in my GPS as a waypoint, and that will allow me to return to this point at any given time. The way to determine the latitude and longitude of a point is to select one of the known lines of latitude or longitude, in this case we're going to find the latitude first, and lay your chart plotter on that known line of latitude. And once again, we will walk the plotter along the chart until we reach the selected position. Once we've done that, we can make a mark with our pencil on the latitude scale and we've now determined the latitude of that point. We do the same for longitude by finding a known and printed line of longitude that exists on the scale. And we will once again walk our plotter to the position where we can then mark that position on the longitude scale. We can then remove the plotter, and we should be able to read that latitude and longitude as a coordinate. So here in the northeast, we're at 41 degrees. And if each bar is one minute, I can count that we have three minutes and one-tenth of a minute. So the latitude of that point is 41 degrees, 3.1 minutes, north. 
Now it's important to designate either north or south because that latitude can also fall in the southern hemisphere. And we do the same for longitude. I've made a mark on the longitude scale. We're at 73 degrees. And I can count that we are at 73 degrees, 14.9 degrees west. So I would write that as 73 degrees, 14.9 degrees west. So our latitude and longitude becomes 41 degrees, 3.1 minutes north, and 73 degrees, 14.9 minutes west. Once I have those coordinates, I can put them into the GPS, use them as a waypoint, and return to that position at any time. So that's it for plotting latitude and longitude on an awful chart. I'm glad I had the opportunity to present this lesson to you. I hope you learned something, and I wish you a safe passage.